This is Sean Irwin, your youth director with Darts Ontario, and welcome to episode 19 of Darts Ontario Let's Talk Darts. I wanted to talk to our youth players from past and present to see how they got into darts and their story to help inspire youth dart players of today. Thank you to our sponsor, SSS Canada, for all their support in the Darts Ontario organization. Go to their Facebook page to see the high quality custom dart shirts, which you can order for your team or individually. I'm with Latressa Skrzniak, formerly of the Toronto Youth Dart League and back-to-back -back provincial champion. Thank you for taking the time to answer some questions so the dart community, the dart community can get to know more about Latressa. So how are you doing today? Well, I'm okay. Yeah. Um, it's been a long day. It's been a long day, has it? Yeah. <laughs> Life is busy now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to take a, talk a little bit about uh, your dart history um, as a youth and an adult player now. Uh, so how did you get started playing darts and how old were you? Um, well, my, my whole family, we're a family of dart players. So I was constantly going around with my parents and, and um, watching them play in tournaments and the provincial shoots and everything like that. And then I started playing when I was 12, I believe. Um, my mom put me into uh, the Wolf Pack, uh, Ellen Kozik's Youth League when she ran it out of Toronto. And I played with her for, I wanna say two or three years. So, yeah, that's that's how I started. <laughs> I didn't realize you were in the. I knew you were in the Toronto Youth Dart League, but I didn't realize you started uh, with Ellen as well. So I uh, did, yes. So who inspired you to play competitively? Was it your parents? Um, my parents played a small part in it, but it was actually uh, my uncle who inspired me to play because I heard so many stories about how good my uncle was, and it made me sort of want to be as good as him. <laughs> and, how, and how did you make out? Did you get to beat him? Uh, actually, I've never played him because he quit darts before, like completely quit uh, once I actually got good enough to beat him <laughs> and he mm -hmm. never picked them up again. So I never actually got to play him. Well, that's too bad. Now, uh, you must have had to practice a lot uh, with all your success and uh, how often did you practice during the season and in the off season? Did you practice? Um, during the season, it was every, every Sunday consecutively, pardon me. Um, and I mean, if I had time during the week, aside from school, I would pick up throw for an hour, two hours a day. No, um, did, go ahead. Uh, and in the off season, it was every day. <laughs> Every day I was throwing for at least an hour. Now, how did you make practicing fun? Because it's never as fun as a real game, but you can't just throw at the board. What did you do to make it fun? Um, well, my dad bought me dart cards. <laughs> so I would, uh, I would play with those and try to uh, beat my points every time. And I would also play myself. So I would be both sides of the board. I was my own opponent and I would try to beat each score. <laughs> it's a good way to practice when you're alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, how did you prepare yourself before a big match and getting yourself focused? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I can't really say I did. I just went in. I mean, for me, it was all about the breathing, I guess, I just went in as calm as I possibly could be and just went from there. Well, we know darts is a very emotional game. So um, it's having to be able to control those emotions while you're at the line. And how did you make out doing that? Uh, it was really hard in the beginning, really hard. Um, but throughout the years, you kind of, you get used to the nervous and you get used to everybody watching you and it sort of dies down because you learn how to drown it out in a sense and um when you drown it out and you know it's you have that mentality where it's only you then it becomes a lot easier 
Yeah, we, we can't worry about our opponents, that's for sure. Absolutely. So after a good performance and the match is over, what's the one thing you like to do? Shake my opponent's hand. Yeah. That's, that's always <laughs> great sportsmanship. And, and sometimes yeah. you want to maybe go see your mom or family or anything, uh, anybody else, your team maybe. Absolutely. It was always the first person I always went to was my mom. Um, because she was constantly there. She, she's always been a big supporter of mine. And then it was my youth leaders and the rest of my team. And it was hugs and celebrations and high fives. And it was, it was the best time. Well, Toronto had a huge league, always have had, and they still do. Well, maybe not this year. Nobody does. Um, yeah. That's a different story. Um, so yeah, you've had a lot of support and a lot of people cheering you on for sure. Absolutely. So let's talk about some of your history with Darts Ontario, because there's a lot. Um, thank, thank goodness for the Darts Ontario website, because it has uh, lots and lots of history of how everyone did. Um, so yeah. here we go. 2011, you finished joint third at your zones, and 2013 first. Um, you didn't have to play too many zones, because if you keep finishing top four at provincials, you don't have to play zones the next year. No. So now at provincials, 2011 and 2014, you finished top four. 2013, you finished second in Ontario and made Team Ontario for your first time. And then, yes. then you became back-to-back -back champion as you won 2015 and 2016 for the Senior Girls Ontario Championship. Take us back to the stage in 2013 first, then your back-to-back -back wins. And tell us about that experience being on stage at first time. Oh gosh, uh, 2013. Oh, that was so long ago. <laughs> um, it was absolutely nerve wracking. You know, all that, all that, you know, training you do for yourself to drown everything out, it almost becomes non existent because you're up on this big stage and everybody in the room is looking at you. And it is the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done in my life. Um, but at the same time, it was also one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life. And I, 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 I cried, I cried when it was all over. <laughs> and then in 2015 and 2016, um, you ended up winning it. Tell us about that. Oh, um, 2015 was a hard year for me because I had, pardon me, just had my oldest son two weeks before the provincial shoot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so I went up two weeks later after having my son and played, um, played uh, the provincial shoot. And I mean, in a sense, I did it for him, I guess. I mean, that was my mentality. You know, I, I just went and had this experience and now I want to have this one. Um, so I did it for him. And then 2016, uh, I was my last year as a youth player. And I just I, I, I wanted to do it one last time as a youth player. So that was my whole mentality going through it is, you know, this is your last chance. You got to do it now. <laughs> Some great times. I remember that as well, because uh, I first uh, went to provincials in 2013, I believe. I was there just for the Sunday. Uh, didn't know too many people. And then um, 2014 was the first year that we brought the Oshawa team uh, to uh, provincials. So got to know you and so many other people over the years. Absolutely. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so next up was nationals. In 2013, you went to St. John's, Newfoundland. In the junior doubles with your partner, Casey Reynolds, you won the title as Canadian junior female doubles champion. Take us back to that event with winning it all. Um, you know what? It was, it was a really rough day that day. Um, I had, I was having problems with uh, my ankle from a previous injury uh, a few years prior to that. And she had gotten into, I believe, uh, a motorbike accident or something um, a few weeks before we left. So her whole left leg was bruised. And we went through that entire 
event, both of us limping around everywhere. <laughs> and we were so exhausted and so sore. And we just wanted to get it over with as quick as we possibly could. Well, a good team you were. <laughs> So how was the experience though, besides being in pain and, you know, winning that title, the whole event through the whole week, how was that at nationals? Oh, it was absolutely amazing. It was uh, the best time I've ever had. And it was such an experience and I will never, ever forget it. Um, so many different people and so many different coaches even from all of the other teams giving you their own advice and uh it was just amazing how much of a family it was like even being opponents to everybody else you you got to know our former uh, youth director very well uh with going to nationals three years uh with marjorie and how was that with uh, being with marjorie at first um nationals with you um, <laughs> the first nationals, me and Marjorie didn't actually get along too well. <laughs> um, so it was, it was an experience. Like I got into quite a bit of trouble with her. Um, but throughout the years or whatever, we, we grew very close. I, I considered her a second mom after that, after that year, she was, she was like a second mom. Well, we, we know that she cared so much about her, uh, youth players and, um, you know, she was uh, wanted to make sure everything was done right. That's for sure. Absolutely. So, so getting back to nationals in 2015, which was held in St. Catharines, you finished second in Canada in senior female doubles with your partner, Emma uh, Shikowski. And in, yeah. singles, in singles, both you and Emma fell short of playing each other in the finals as you both finished top four. Tell us about your second nationals. Um, that was another experience all in itself. Uh, another, another year of having so much fun with the, with the team and all of the other teams. And, uh, it was, it was disappointing, uh, falling short, um, from having to play Emma in the finals for singles. We wanted to play each other so bad. Uh, but the, 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 two girls, one who I'm actually very good friends with, uh, Samantha Gibbons and Rita Champagne from Quebec, shot absolutely amazing, amazing darts. Um, and it was, it was a very successful year, I would say. Well, you did well. And in uh, 2000, uh, 2016, you got back to nationals and this time was in Richmond, BC. And in senior female doubles with Jessica Howe, uh, Jessica Howie, you made top four as well as mixed doubles top four with uh, As Austin Young. Tell us about your final youth nationals. Uh, not as much of a successful year, but a lot of fun. Um, I wish I could have done much better than I did, uh, but the, the, um, the uh, female doubles and the mixed doubles, uh, it was really hard there was a lot of really good competition there that year. A lot of people that I had never seen before. Um, and a lot of faces that I had seen before as well. And everybody was just so much, it seemed that they were just so much better than all the previous years. And it was, it was really tough. It was a extremely tough year. It's a whole different caliber at nationals. Like uh, Ontario's got, it's so hard to make team Ontario with so many players in Ontario, but even going to nationals, it's definitely a, a different caliber as well. Absolutely. It's, it's out of, out of. <laughs> <laughs> so any other success and memories in youth darts you care to share before we get into the adults? Uh, youth darts, honestly, my, my favorite part of youth darts, especially uh, being on Team Ontario was um, Marjorie pranking us. <laughs> uh, she used to um, every year with the with the new teams. She used to uh, prank every single one of us in some sort of way. But it was always good fun, and that will always be my favorite part. I, I've heard a few stories uh, over the past years of uh, with Marjorie doing that. So a lot of fun. 
Yes. <laughs> Tell us about the transition of playing darts and moving into the adult program. Uh, that was scary. I was absolutely terrified. Um, I, I knew the caliber of most of the players from, you know, watching my mom go out and play against most of the players. Uh, and I, I was so nervous, so nervous. And I actually almost didn't want to do it. <laughs> I wanted to take a break, but I ended up going through with it anyway. <laughs> Well, and you did very well because in 2017 was your first year playing the adult program. You finished top four in Ontario and made it to nationals. Now at nationals, you went to St. John, New Brunswick, and you finished top four in ladies doubles, and you lost in the ladies singles finals all in Canada, finishing second. Tell us about both events and the overall experience of your first adult nationals um, throughout that event. Oh, the adult nationals was completely different it was a completely different atmosphere um with the with the youth nationals i found yes it was competitive but it was a lot more fun than it was competitive uh with the adult it was all competition um i mean they had their fun too you know their their jokes with the people that knew each other and i knew absolutely no one but the people on my team um so going in to the ladies doubles with Bailey, uh, that was completely nerve wracking for me. And, you know, she, she, she carried me a lot of the time. Um, uh, but we managed to do really well together. And the singles was a totally different ball game because I had nobody to carry me through my nerves. It was just myself. And I just kept pushing because I wanted to do it for Marjorie. She told me I could, so I did. Oh, you did amazing. Finishing second in adults, uh, all of Canada. Well done. Thank you. So at Provincials in 2018, you finished top 16. Tell us what it's like playing with so many great players from all around Ontario. As you mentioned, like it's a whole different caliber now playing adults. Um, what's it like playing in such a big event like Provincials against so many great uh, female dart players? Uh, you know what? It's it's honestly exhilarating. It it makes you it makes you nervous, but at the same time. Uh, it, it pushes you to want to do better for yourself. And because you know, uh, the, the way I've always thought is the better the player you play, the better you will play. Um, so it, it's, it's that constant push. And, you know, when you get that, when it's that boost of confidence, like, okay, I, I can actually do this. And it, it sort of drives you through and, makes you want more definitely definitely gives you that drive when you're playing somebody better than you so absolutely um, what what are your goals for the new season and how will you work towards the reaching those goals as long as COVID doesn't affect us that we can't play of course uh the goals for the new season at this point are to just get to provincials <laughs> I mean uh we know we're already pushed through from last uh last year when we well this year technically when we couldn't play um so right now the goal is to just get there you know hopefully everything balances out and, and we're able to play and if we are able to play then it's just pushing through it at this point I mean I personally I've been practicing a lot I play online leagues and and um stuff like that to keep my darts up um so Right now, the goal is to just get there. <laughs> well, I think with the online darts uh, situation now, it's the only way we can't just keep playing in the basement by ourselves. Um, online darts, at least it gives you that, uh, that challenge against other players. Yeah, for sure it does. And there's a lot of good players that play. I mean, I played a, a tournament back in, I believe it was July. And uh, there was even... Um, some of the top shooters from the U.S. playing in the tournament. I got to play uh, Darren Young. Um, and I took a leg off of him. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Great player. 
absolutely great guy too he's he's yeah. absolutely totally humble and really funny and just a great guy to talk to so how have you become such an expert in calculating uh in your head while you're standing at the line because we all know it's so much math and darts uh, a lot of mistakes <laughs> making a lot of mistakes and just uh learning learning from them honestly um it's it's quite funny because darts actually helped ended up helping me in school and uh so it was it was basically just making a lot of mistakes you know you see you make a mistake you fix it and then you learn for the next time and it was just constantly doing that over and over and over again until you finally get a hang on it and you just need to chalk your own games and chalk other people's games and you're going to improve and it definitely Absolutely. helped uh, it helped. I remember it helping me so much in school with my math skills for sure. Yeah, it, it helped me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a, a little bit about uh, playing in the Toronto Youth Dart League. How was that experience playing every Sunday with the, the group of uh, youth that you had over the years? It was so much fun. Uh, there was, uh, uh, when I first went in, it was uh, Kim Shilson that ran it and she was just so fun to be around. She was constantly joking with us and, and pushing our buttons just to get us riled up. And, and then when Maggie and Paul took over, I mean, it was, it was basically the same thing. Nothing ever changed. And it was like a big family. Like I, I would go every Sunday and it was like hanging out with my family and it was absolutely amazing. Well, there's a, a few good leaders you just mentioned for sure. So absolutely. Uh, so what other hobbies do you have besides darts or any other sports you play? Uh, no other sports. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not very athletic, uh, but I, a uh, couple of hobbies I have, I like, I like to draw, um, and I make pom-pom rugs, which sounds kind of funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I mean, other than that, just, uh, playing with my kids, really just being around my family. Well, you've got two kids now, if I recall. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good. Um, so do you have a favorite opponent you enjoy playing against? And if there's one player in the world you'd love to play, who would that be and why? Oh, um, uh, my favorite person to play against would be Maria Mason. Uh, playing with her and against her, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. She she always pushes me to be my best and you know whether I win or I lose she is so humble and it, she's just an amazing person to be around all like an all-around stand-up woman um and you know she she tells me all the time because I get so frustrated that she beats me more than I beat her and she tells me all the time she goes one day I won't be able to beat you anymore mm -hmm. And she's, she's just absolutely amazing and definitely my favorite person to play. <laughs> and is there somebody else that you would love to play that you've never played? That I would love to play that I've never played. Mm -hmm. mm. Many people talk about players in England and uh, that they'd love to play some of the pros. I mean, I, I would, I would absolutely love to play any of the pros. I mean, I, I have in a sense, <laughs> yeah. um, but the, nobody really in particular comes, comes to mind that I have, you know, dreamed about playing. Well, just being at the board and playing anybody is uh, what it's all about, right? Yeah, anybody's beatable. <laughs> Uh, that is for sure. So what's the one thing you need to improve yourself to get yourself back to nationals? Cause we're always improving and bettering ourselves. Um, I, I would say, honestly, the, the one thing that would just improve anything right now is more practice because even though I play the online leagues, I don't get a lot of practice with my kids being around and, and helping my oldest with school. So I just, I, I feel like I, I need to practice just that little bit more just to get a handle on my throw again, because it's, it's been that long. <laughs> well, that's what everyone needs to do. Uh, definitely some good advice there. And speaking of advice, just one more question. What advice would you give the youth today 
to help follow your footsteps. Keep pushing, keep wanting more for yourself, keep practicing, you know, like, like I just said, everybody's beatable. It doesn't matter who they are, how long they've been playing, everybody is beatable. So keep pushing, keep telling yourself, you know, this is what you want and eventually you'll have it. Well said, some good, good advice. So um, Latressa, thank you so much for doing this and uh, taking the time to talk to us and helping inspire the youth of today. Uh, we wish you luck reaching your goals and hopefully we see you at some tournaments and of course provincials next year. Oh, fingers crossed. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Have a great night. What a great interview talking to Latressa. So much great history throughout the youth program and now adult program with her. So hopefully uh, we see her at uh, provincials next year if we have uh, a provincials due to COVID, of course. So all we can do is cross our fingers. Make sure you go to our website at www.dartsontario.ca to find out more information about our organization and like the Darts Ontario Facebook page so you can get all the updates. Are you a current or former youth player in the Darts Ontario program? Would you like to be one of our would you like to be on one of our episodes? You can email me at youth at dartsontario.com. This is Sean Irwin, your youth director with Darts Ontario, and make sure you check out our next interview on episode 20 of Darts Ontario Let's Talk Darts. Our next guest made Team Ontario in 1998. I look forward to hearing the story of how this player made the team and the experience at Nationals. Thank you for watching and see you next time.